Let's talk about Season 2 of House of the Dragon. We are on the doorstep of Episode 3 releasing, and so far, so great for Season 2. Picking up with the high quality that Season 1 let off with, I've had the opportunity to listen to some reviews, hear some breakdowns, and, well, it's, um, it's off to what some people think is a slow start, but the political machinations was always what made Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon so successful. So for everybody waiting for the spectacle, I mean... I think you just have to wait for episode four because at least the title of that one has been released and well There's only so much plotting before there actually gets to a dragon fight So yeah, cool your your jets and slow your roll for just a little while longer Let let everything cook let everything cook. Okay, it looks like Damon's going to Heron Hall and that'll be a lot of fun You might see somebody get burnt. You old good old the noodly craxies could be up to something nefarious But from so so far what I'm hearing Seems like a pretty good show. Might do something with it. Might do something with the season when things really start to pick up or at the end of the year. Not entirely sure. I don't really have a reliable way to watch it outside of, you know, sailing around with Corliss and watching it via those means. But I don't really want to do that. While we normally talk about TV shows and production companies that produce bomb after bomb, this is one of those rare opportunities where we can go ahead and talk about something being an overwhelming success with a bit of an asterisk, okay? So House of the Dragon Season 2 was Max's biggest streaming day ever. Okay, that's fantastic. Season 2 of House of the Dragon is basically Alicent Hightower asking, Y'all want to hear a story about why me and this princess fell out? Kind of long and full of suspense. I mean, you know, there's something else, especially in those first couple of episodes that maybe Alicent was calling for and it has nothing to do with any real coming war in the realm. She's uh, far more interested in something else, but we'll get into that very shortly, just like the way that he got into Alicent. And according to Variety, 7.8 million viewers globally said yes. The season two premiere of Hot D had fewer viewers than its season one debut, but still managed to give Max its best streaming day overall. So yeah, 7.8. 8 million viewers. This isn't some funky math with minutes watched or just simply being trumpeted as the best original programming released on a Sunday at 7 o'clock. No caveats, no nothing like that. 7.8 million viewers. It is down, like it's saying, okay? Which is, you know, managed to give Max its best streaming day overall, which is especially good for such a, yeah, no eating heavy first episode and then the second episode was the fallout of that where it's like who lad there's a, there's a bunch of stuff on display okay it was also warner brothers discovery biggest season two streaming premiere in europe where max only recently launched yeah okay cool the superfluous numbers house of the dragon premiered in oh with 10 million viewers in 2022 peaking with episode two at 10.2 million viewers which uh, outside of episode nine which is the obvious pick for worst episode of the season which surprisingly episode nine was written by the same person who just wrote episode two of season two which is widely regarded as one of the weakest episodes not bad by any means but sarah Hess is just not that great and her name sarah Hess. i know it's sarah something Whatever, go figure him, all right? But despite Max's big night, the show has seen a 20% drop in viewership as the Dragon War heats up because of all the fire, get it? We'll see if more people tune in. Yeah, 20% drop, man. It's not because, you know, the quality has dropped 20%. It's just... Hey man, here's the thing. These long development cycles, television shows in this case, with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I bet you didn't think I could work it in, but I did. It having lower than expected sales, but still, you know, between 2 and 2.5 million sales is nothing to sneeze at. But when things are cooking for this long, because yeah, it was just about a full two years between episodes. Or I'm sorry, between seasons. You can't do that and expect everybody to tune back in because there's probably a fair amount of people, even though this was well marketed, that had no idea that it was back. They might have enjoyed season one, watched along with it as the show continued to maintain a very high level of viewership and a very high level of quality. Episode nine aside, some people just aren't turning out. Or coming back until, I don't know, maybe this truncated season completes. Because yeah, it took them two years and you're only getting eight episodes. But that means also that seasons three and four, it's already been greenlit for season three. And I'd imagine, you know, season four is not exactly a pipe dream given the fact that the Dunkin' Egg TV show, okay, 
What what's the law? Lo- what's the laborious name for that one? Game of Thrones, the Hedge Knight, or a Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. It's so stupid. It's a terrible name. Like House of the Dragon, very good name. Game of Thrones rolls off the tongue better than a Song of Ice and Fire. But that tongue twister that's dropping in early 2025, maybe in the winter, maybe we're only a few months away from that. Fantastic. But it's also only going to be six or eight episodes, so. Perhaps Warner Brothers learned that, yeah, okay, we can't have these big, long delays, okay, unless you're setting up for a finale, unless this is, like, you know, a Sopranos-type situation. Unless this is, you know, like the aforementioned Game of Thrones, where you could go ahead and take a long time setting up Season 7 and Season 8. Again, doesn't denote quality, obviously, but it does generate quite a bit of hype. So yeah, shorter development cycles lead to higher viewer attachment. Can we agree with that? Can we finally get around to that? Okay, AAA gaming industry, movie making in general, can we can we figure that out? Lower budgets, quicker turnaround time. I know, we're asking you to do more with less, or maybe, I don't know, just do more with what you're already getting, which is ridiculous, okay? Because you got eight episodes of The Acolyte over there on Disney Plus for $180 million. Jesus. It's as much as season one of House of the Dragon, by the way, which you got... 10 episodes for that were at at least 45 50 over an hour long as opposed to 26 minutes with the acolyte but i digress this isn't just simply taking a dump on disney you know it's funny that you know the acolyte and house of the dragon are coming out at the same time but it's not all roses okay because there's some freaks that are out there Okay, for as much as I'm liking what I'm hearing in regards to this show, and as much as when I watched the first season, I liked and I detested certain choices that Sir Kristen Cole, okay? A character that Fabian Frankel portrayed, a young knight from a lowborn family working his way up, you know, being anointed and picked for the Kingsguard, eventually becoming Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, and now, spoiler at the end of episode two, spoiler, just press ahead 10 seconds if you don't want something spoiled, the hand of the king, I mean, like, he's a really, he's an inspirational story, and, oh, I guess there's going to be another spoiler here, you know, the one guy who banged both figurehead queens in this upcoming war is like, yeah, okay, he's done a lot of crazy stuff, but that's his character, not Fabian Frankel, okay, like, maybe he's a bit of a Casanova in real life, don't know, don't care, just keep on playing the very interesting Sir Kristen Cole. But now, yeah, uh, now why are you guys attacking a very nice Fabian Frankel on Instagram? What says you guys think, okay? And I got the Mary Sue pulled up because I want to see how they reconcile this. Because here's what's going on, right? Okay, Fabian Fabian Frankel had to limit his comments on Instagram due to harassment he has faced since House of the Dragon Season 2 began. It's interesting, right? Because, yeah, he's got just Instagram posts, him and his very good-looking King's Ar- or Kingsguard armor, okay? High-quality stuff that they have over there at warner brothers right but there you got there you got the comments okay i wish you were heir to the throne uh where were you when the heir to the throne was murdered well um you know exactly where he was if you were watching the episode i hate you okay how did you go from being the most liked character and become the worst character in game of thrones history man i hope somebody jumps this guy i hate you Kristen. Comments on this post have been limited. And you take a look at the profile pictures every single time down there. And well, why is it always women who are doing this stuff? Okay, because uh, us racist bigots who have the audacity to simply say that, hey, the Acolyte or maybe the Kenobi show were incredibly poorly written. Like we'll get slings and arrows thrown at us for our arguments about the quality of writing maybe the performances from certain actors. We also get told that we attack people and harass people on the internet, but whenever asked for receipts, they always seem to come up empty, but when they do get provided, well, they just end up looking like this. I'm sure that if Fabian was the type of person to spin it as, oh, I got death threats online, you could take that fourth comment and spin it in that direction. Why is nobody calling out these toxic fans? Oh, Oh, okay, I guess I know why, but let's see if the Mary Sue has any answers to this. Now leave it up to the most toxic side of the fandom to ruin something we love. Rachel. Rachel Leishman, the idiot that had the audacity to call nerd erotics understanding of Doctor Who lore into question, okay? Say the toxic side of fandom, okay? I thought, like, this is the Mary Sue. You're supposed to be a supposed to be a pro-feminist side of this, okay? What, what are you calling all your, are you calling the sisterhood toxic? 
Come on. Fabian Frankel is a very sweet and nice man who brings Kristen Cole to life on House of the Dragon. While many of us have been joking around about how Cole acts uh, on the series, fans have turned to harassing Frankel about it. He's done some floompy stuff that he didn't end up getting you know, reprimanded for. Kind of caved in the face of a highborn male lord from another family and didn't end up facing any repercussions for it. Very strange. Or how he also sat a master of coin down so hard he ended up dying. Like, it's very, very odd, but okay. The most recent episode of House of the Dragon saw an uptick in fans talking about Sir Christian, or Sir Christian Cole. Well, I thought it was all in good fun at the beginning with fans joking about his actions. It has clearly gotten out of control. Frankel has reportedly limited his comments on his post after fans flooded them, writing to him as if he is Kristen Cole. Which, I, would you call these fans? I just thought that these would be the toxic... Hate mongers. Where's the, where's the vitriol, right? Like, these are the same types of people that would go after Kelly Marie Tran for her depiction of Rose Tico in The Last Jedi, or those same racists that went after Moses Ingram for portraying Riva in Obi-Wan show. Where's that same vitriol? This time around for the people attacking Fabian Frankel. Uh, knowing that Frankel uh, was being harassed on social media has ushered in support from fans who can recognize a fictional character and an actor playing them are not, in fact, the same person. Just d keep this article in mind the next time, which also looking over and seeing a bunch of, you know, acolyte type articles. Just just keep this in mind right now, the way that they handle the, peop the people attacking Fabian Frankel and the way that... I don't know, the Mary Sue defends Amanda Stenberg's goofy diss track for the bigots, homophobes, sexists, and any other ists and phobes that I've uh, left out, even though she is nowhere near the top of the list of the reasons that that show sucks. It is honestly upsetting that Frankel has gone out of his way to limit the replies on his post. Social media is a great way for actors to connect with their fans. I just haven't really seen that happen all that often. You can share their, uh, who can share their love and support for a piece of art. But now people could not figure out fiction from reality that is gone for Frankel. Or Frankel. Quite frankly, things like this ruin the fun for fans, too. We are collectively making very light, loving fun of Cole. If now, oh, and now if we do, it feels strange since you guys could not separate an actor from his character. Yeah, exactly. I just want you to keep that same energy and apply it to other things and or I don't know, maybe try to hold those toxic fans accountable, the people that are ruining the franchise. But oh, again, if you just take a look at that first article that we had pulled up, actually, nobody's ruining, ruining this franchise because it's well acted, well written, well performed, and incredibly well received. You don't have to run defense and make up fictitious attacks because we see the way that you try to denounce the actual attacks, therefore leading to even less credibility that we will give you going forward. You try to make other ludicrous assertions. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Codswell. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.